viewers from around the world. I'm Kristen Schwarz, licensed midwife and MC for Gold Learning. And I'm here today with Alice Farrow, and we're going to chat a little bit about their upcoming presentation, Back to Basics for Cleft Lip and Palate, an overview of strategies for support, lactation in the neonatal period and beyond. Welcome, Alice. Hi. I'm so glad to have you here with us today. And I said we're going to chat about your topic that you're going to be presenting on. But before we do so, before we jump into that, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and your professional journey. Okay. Um, so I'm an IBCLC. I certified in December of 2016. Um, but I've been interested in lactation since 2001 when my first child was born. Um, in 2006, I became a Lalesh League leader which was also at the same time that my second child was diagnosed with a cleft lip and palate. Um, so I was a Lesh League leader for seven and a half years. And after that, um, I worked as a lactation educator for a while and then became an IBCLC. In all of that time, um, I've been giving presentations about uh, breastfeeding and chest feeding with a cleft lip and palate. Um, I have a website and I write for other people's websites. I write handouts and all sorts of things. Um, and I also advocate for, because it took me a very long time to become an IBCLC, I also have um, advocated a lot for equity um, in becoming an IBCLC and simplifying the prerequisites and the pathways to becoming an IBCLC. Thank you so much for sharing that. And we are so glad to have you for this presentation. When I saw the topic that you're presenting on, I got really, really excited. You know, you're going to talk mm -hmm. about cleft lip and palate. And there is, to be honest, not that much information out there, right? I mean, so here you are and <laughs> we are excited about it. So tell us a little bit about the topic and why it is so important. Well, it's um, okay. So it's it is an important topic, um, but unfortunately, because it's such a small number of children, that's possibly why there's not a lot of information. Um, so cleft lip and palate affects around one in seven hundred um, infants. So for many people, they will only see one, maybe two babies with cleft lip and palate in their careers, um, unless you work in a big hospital where you might see up to ten babies a year. Um, but it's still not a huge number of babies. So you know, it's it's um, it's not a an urgent topic for most people because it's not something that they see very often. Um, but it is a very important topic because it obviously it's it's um, it's a problem that affects the oral structures and it directly impacts breastfeeding and chest feeding. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the information that is available is geared towards. Um, expressing milk and using bottles or other types of feeding methods. Um, but in my own experience, when I had a child born with a cleft lip and palate, um, she had a unilateral cleft lip and palate. Um, we did directly breastfeed um, partially. And then after her surgeries, we went on to breastfeed directly for well into toddlerhood. So my talk is about all the different ways to feed a baby with a cleft lip, or a cleft lip, a cleft palate, or a cleft lip and palate, um, and just that there are options. You know, some parents prefer expressing milk and using bottles. Some parents prefer to try and directly breastfeed, and some parents do prefer to use formula and bottles. Um, and it's just very important to understand that there are different types of people, different types of objectives, and how to support everybody, um, whatever their their, their their feeding goals are, um, and also that there are different types of clefts. Okay. Very good. Um, I think that is very important. I liked what you said there about supporting everyone and um, showing that there's options, right? I you were you were saying something additional. Um, well, just you know, I think that's the most important thing to take away from this is that. There are different ways of, of feeding these babies, and we will look at that. And there's not always a best way, so it's really important to be client-focused, um, client-centered, and help them um, 
to find their own objectives that work for their family and their baby. Um, and the other important takeaway point is that there are very different types of clefts and we will look at three main classes of clefts which are cleft lip, cleft palate and cleft lip and palate. We'll briefly look at a sequence called Pierre Robin sequence um, and we'll just look at how the different cleft and whether there are associated um, anomalies with that, how there are quite different difficulties and quite different expectations and objectives that can will, will occur. And this is important because when we're sharing case studies or when we're informing clients, we need to know what, what the different types of clefts are and how they will impact feeding differently. Thank you so much, Alice. Um, that sounds very informative. I'm looking forward to your presentation and uh, I'm sure our delegates too. Thank you for sitting here with me and chatting about it. It's my pleasure. I'm looking forward to it too. Alice's presentation, Back to Basics for Cleft Lip and Palate, an overview of st strategies to support lactation in the neonatal period and beyond, will be live on June 13th and is part of the Gold Neonatal Online Conference 2018. And to our listeners, for more information on this presentation and on the other presentations in the Neonatal Conference, please visit goldneonatal.com. Thank you all for listening. Bye-bye.